In the past few years, I've worked on many React projects with different scales. The idea of finding a customized architecture that can handle all scales of projects, from simple to enterprise, was very intriguing. And finally, I found it. I've earned so much experience during the journey of finding my personalized approach, and I'm gonna share it with you. The very first thing we have to know is what do we do in React mostly? Server data, forms data, data visualizing, application asset data, cache data. There is one thing common between them all, data. React is all about data flow. A project is only scalable and easy to maintain if it keeps this concept in mind at every stage. We can divide each React project into major parts, handling user input, handling external data, routing, and styling. Now we need to make decisions for the best library picking. And when you're searching hundreds of NPM packages, a significant amount of time is spent here. Our choices here can decide the future of the project. Combinations are endless, but you must pick a versatile pack of libraries here that suits your preference. My preferred choice is Zasand, React Hook Form, and Zot for handling users' input, which can work together flawlessly. React Query for handling external data, React Router and Nox, which is the industry standard. Although I've been recently using Tansac Router and it's great. Emotion and MUI for its amazing autocomplete, also for icons, charts, grid, and pickers. And also I create applications for different time zones and calendars, so the pickers are amazing here. Before I can start using them in my project, I have to arrange the pick libraries to work together flawlessly. But before we continue, please hit that like and subscribe button to see more videos like this. First, I specify my files and folders structure, and it's mostly similar for any library selection. So let's start here. Each application always has some isolated modules that some parts of them need to be accessed from other modules, and some shared files and functions that are not specific to a single module. Instead of putting every aspect of the application like UI, data management, and forms in separate folders and modules, I really prefer to have collocation. It means that you must keep related logics as close to each other. Each module can be logically isolated from the rest of the application and each of them contains similar folders. It's best practice to follow a consistent structure, but you can use whatever you like. But try to keep the folder names short to make them readable, but try to keep the components and method names self-explanatory. For example, if the file name is form, I'm gonna name its component as product form and export it as name exports style. Also, I follow a naming convention for my folder and file names. Kebab case for folders, React components and hook names. Camel case for other files like types and schemas. Now we need to create relations between files and it's more tricky. But generally, being consistent here is the key. I prefer to start with services and effects. I put all my API communications like getting data or sending data, response types, and post schemas of the server in a single file for each module so the UI knows what it's dealing with. Although you can create different adapter utils here, but I prefer to keep everything here as close to each other. Now we don't use these functions directly in our React code, so we create wrappers around these to make server logic and a set easier to maintain and prevent a spaghetti code. For forms, I create schemas in separate files, and for each form, whether it's small or big, I create a Zod schema, form type, and default values for the initial state of my form. It's best practice to handle Zod errors and make them according to your needs in a separate global file and follow internationalization guides. Then for UI fields like inputs and select components, I create separate controllers for each instead of defining them each time or using them directly. I really put some time and effort here to create the best controllers. Also, I really prefer to use form context instead of passing form controllers from parent to child. I also should related field errors to make things maintainable. Now for using them, I create a form instance and wrap everything inside the provider and put puzzles beside each other. But let's not stop here. For the edit phase, we can put the ID of the current editing entity in the URL, and for that I use Nox for amazing query params type safety, and get query data based on that to reset the form. I really recommend you to use URL query params more, because it's an amazing way to save a state during different browser sessions, but I don't recommend using it for every part of the application. For lists also, it's pretty straightforward, whether you want to show a list of cards, grid, or whatever. Just use your defined query and map over data and show it here. 
For set management for each module, I create a slice at root level of the module. And then I'm gonna wrap it inside global use app store for using it globally in the application. Also, I put my specific utilities and functions inside the utils folder. And then we do the same procedure for all the other modules. Being consistent is great but do not sacrifice flexibility over consistency, as not all features and modules follow a specific scenario. Try to be creative. So for small features, we can adjust the architecture by some amount. For a module with minimum fields and API calls, I prefer to use the uncontrolled version of fields, as creating schemas and form providers are really not necessary here. These small changes make a tremendous difference. They make the developer faster and smaller modules will make sense. Having no quality guidelines is of course bad and you should use linters and formatters. Defining and customizing them like pre-tier and eslint can give the project a structure, especially for multi-developer projects. Also, always try to have multiple environments for production, staging and development. There are many more optimizations you could make but this was the way I tried to create modern React web apps that are suitable for most projects with a little bit of adjustments. If you have any ideas, just share them down below. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.